Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I got the full Sploit deck live and ready for you guys. If you guys are ready for the best Sploit Brave deck profile in the history of mankind, I want you guys to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and official today, the Sploit Playmat is back in stock, so get your Sploit Mats now! Even I don't have a Sploit Playmat. That's how hard it is to get. I saw my Magician Mat. They're the best mats in the game, as you guys see over here, so get yours right now in the description. It will last for one more week. The next week, every single day, I'm going to locals with a Splite deck. So get your beautiful Splite mat ever. With that being said, Splite Brave, the deck I'm taking to regionals right here. Let's get it. So the best part, the best engine in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now are these nine Splite cards. They're arguably with some of the best cards ever made after Zodiacs. One card engines, you have nine of them. And because of Prosperity, you have 12 of them. So the reason why this deck is so good is simply these nine. And the synergy that they have with the Brave cards is because let's say you open any of your your seven strong braves yeah. okay so we're gonna move these in a way so you guys can see all of them so we're gonna have so you have these seven right so let's say you open any of these nine let's say you open jet or blue starter is obvious you just special summon it and you're fine but let's say you open just one jet and you open one of these and typically you're gonna open three hand traps so you set up your enchantress play with but instead of gripping special enchantress and then you link these off and display elf and Splite Elf is what makes this deck possible. Splite Elf then specials back to Jet, which gets Starter, which gets Blue, which gets everything. That's why these nine are so powerful. The ability of these nine to get your whole engine going, which I will be showcasing combo tutorials of Splite in future videos, it, it's so absurd. All you need is really one extender, and what better extender than these? And the fact that you're able to search any of them with Prosperity makes it so you have the best engine in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, arguably in history and the second best engine arguably in history but combine them together for absolute greatness and the synergy with enchantress and swap frog is just absolutely remarkable the fact that you have 10 ways to, to enchantress and you always go out of your way to search enchantress over the griffin who cares about the griffin negate you already have your out to nibiru with carrot and red and uh gigantic splite it doesn't matter so the way this deck works is just so remarkable and you specifically search this Effect to special, special. I just have so many extenders in this deck that I can play around so many hand traps. And what's better, this or Pierce Blight? Still up for debate, but I firmly believe it'll be this one just because it plays your interruptions way stronger and way better. It still plays a bunch of hand traps. Now, the random one ofs that we're going to be playing is the one Ron and Toad. Don't play Dupe Frog. It's a waste. Don't play it. One of each Splite, red and carrot. You don't need two red. This is all you need. Sometimes you'll miss a second red, but we're trying to make it as consistent as possible. And we only want to see these cards. These cards, like, look how many power cards you have. Look at this. This is bigger than all your futures. Look at this. There's like 22 power cards. You just want to open any of them. And then you still, opening Fateful and Gripping is still good. Just any extender. Literally any extender, normal summon, any level 2, you have your full combo. Splite out, bring back another Splite. You have your full combo. And the game point here is because you're still playing so many hand traps, it doesn't even matter. The only brick in the deck is just Draco back. But that does, this is one card. So it's just fine. And going second, playing around interruptions, the Brave Engine does so much. It basically creates two interruptions on the spot, and then you just go splite cards afterwards. So in conjunction with these incredible cards and the two best engines in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and they synergize remarkably together, you're also playing 18 hand traps. So look, I said it, 18. It's a 46-card deck, and you play the best 18 hand traps in the game right now, and I'm going to explain the reasoning behind them. So this deck breaks boards like nothing because of how good the splite and the Brave package is. So in conjunction with how easy it is to break boards, you use the hand traps that are best suited for the actual meta. The only decks you should prepare for, aside from the best deck Pendulum, is the mirror match of Splite and Tier Element. Every single new set, everyone want is a, they want to play the new cards. So they're like, oh, they think the last form. Everyone played Sword Soul. Everyone played Despia. Bro, who the, who's playing Despia now? No one. Only Josh is playing Despia, and he goes 0-5 at Locals with it. Yo, Jesse, you know you're my boy, right? Yo, you, I should, I'm not gonna roast Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> but I will roast Jesse. Jesse, in your last six regionals and YCSs that you went to, how many of them did you top with Brandon? Steven. Yes. Do we really want to get this battle right now? Yes. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> but how many is he gonna top with the best deck, Spl Brave Splite? A billion. Just like I will, but I'll get like a billion and one. Uh... So the reason why you want to play these 18 hand traps is simple. Trial of Minutes play. These 15, usable and very good against all of those, those two decks. You're going to want to side these in if you're not even playing them. Curl is a god card against uh, Terra Element and Splite. And Mourner is great versus both of them. 
Nibiru is the only one that's not great versus both. It's not useless versus Terra Elements, but it's not remarkable. But it's not useless. Typically, you'll end up just using Nib, they'll have to kick Kalos, Mill 5. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of it. And if they bring out Winda pretty early, it's not the best. But nonetheless, these are just the best 18. And when you against Splite, Nibiru is amazing. A lot of people think it's garbage versus Splite. Because you're going, oh, this is going to go gigantic Splite. Shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're not, you're not going to open Nibiru with nothing else. You're playing 18 hand traps. You're going to open Nibiru Valor. You're going to open Nibiru Mourner. Nibiru Imperm. They, they cannot do anything to this. And then post side deck, we play 20 hand traps. You add two more. You want to make sure going second, you win. I don't care about going first. Look at the deck. Going first, you're already going to, already going to win. You're setting up a five negate board with hand traps. You already win going first. I just care about going second. So you want game one. You don't want to lose game one. You need to open two hand traps game one or else you lose. So you're playing 18, totaling 46 cards in the main deck. I, I, I tried playing 43 cards with 15 uh, hand traps. I know 15 hand traps is a lot as well, but the scenarios where you don't open hand trap uses uh, sometimes is not enough against the best decks, and that's what puts this deck apart. You're playing three huge engines. You're playing the Splite, the Brave, which is the two best engines in the game, and a massive, massive, massive hand trap engine. Come bind these three hand traps together, and you just got the best deck after Pendulum. Now the extra deck. Three Splite else. You need to play three. Please, 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 please. This deck card is so powerful, I can't even begin to explain. In the grind game, being able to go into your third elf is vital. Nothing else matters in the extra deck. Literally, aside from what I'm about to show you. Three Splite Elf, two Gigantic Splite. You only need to resolve this once in the game and you win, or in the match. But you, you could resolve three Elf and it'll be vital. And then one Toad, one Downward, one Zeus. These are literally the only vital cards. Everything else uh, are legit. It's just not that vital. These are the only main ones. Never banish any of these, no matter what, with your Prosperity. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Depending if you go first or second, you choose the next ones. But these eight are not debatable in my eyes. And most of the time going second with this deck, when you break boards, you bait them a little bit with some random cards. Then you just special two level twos, downer Zeus their ass, and then you just go spite starter because you just search it with your jet or blue or whatever it may be. So that, that's the idea of the deck, and you always end on a massive board. The other cards you're going to play in your extra deck is One Sky Cavalry because of Winda. Scenarios with uh, where they go Winda, your elements go Winda on your turn. There are scenarios where you already have a special summon monster. You just normal summon, make Sky Cavalry, bounce the Winda, Zeus the board away. If you want to, because they're also probably going to mill eight cards. And then you just summon your actual board. Both Nightmares are, are important. I do not play Splite Smashers or Gamma, if you guys realize, in the main deck. The reason why you don't play Splite Smashers is because it is overrated. Yes, of course, it's a great card. It's a searchable in-engine out to Mystic Mind. That's fantastic. It's a searchable in-engine out to Floodgates. That's fantastic. But you're going to have scenarios where you're going to draw Ron and Toad. Also, no Duke Frog. You're going to draw du yes. Useless. Don't play that nonsense. Call by the Grave. Even no, uh, what's it? Cross the Designator. Forget that. If it doesn't help me going second, I don't care. If, if it's not the bare, I'm only playing, you only should be playing the bare minimum of perfect cards in the deck of Splite Engine. Yeah. Anything else that's extra is should just be a defensive card for going second. I don't care for going first. I'm going to win going first. 90% chance I'm winning going first with this deck. Going second is the issue. I don't care to have a call by to help me go first better. I understand call by is used going second a little bit, but not as much as actual hand traps do. I don't want my opponent to play. And then you're going to think of cards like Dark Ruler or Droplets or Board Breakers. What board is it to break when they're not playing through a billion hand traps? That's also why you need to play Nightmare Phoenix, because you don't main deck Spite Smashers. I do side deck it for random Floodgate decks. I'll explain that process in the side deck. It's next level big brain. I'm telling you, don't play in the main deck. You're going to have times going second when you just play Smashers and cry. You only want hand traps, nothing else. That's why I don't play Gamma or Driver either. Driver is a useless card. We just cut out five useless cards in the deck. You're never going to, in a 10 round tournament, with no Smashers, no Driver, no Dupe Frog, no Cold Bite, to, like going second, I'm saying. You don't want to see any of these cards going second. Uh, you have no a second Splite Red. The absolute bare minimum humanly possible for going second to have multiple hand traps. In a 10 round tournament, this will be the best. And then uh, one Dark, one Access Code. Dark comes up because a lot of times you actually crash a lot with this effect. And it just comes up because every single deck in the format has a Dark to climb into Axis Code. I do not play a Link 3. Axis Code of 4300 for a pop 1000 is fine. Well, if not a pop 1000, you're going to pop 3 with Axis Code. So just that effect alone is good. And then one Underworld Goddess and one Mascarena. I left my IP Mascarena at home, but Underworld Goddess is very vital with the Mascarena because a lot of the times you're going to have free monsters sitting there for nothing in your combo. You're going to have a gigantic Splite, a gigantic, uh, sorry, a Splite Red, or sorry, Splite Blue, <laughs> Splite, what the fuck, Splite Red, Splite Blue, just chilling there, so you just turn them into Mascarena, and the fact that Splite Elf can bring back Mascarena comes up a lot in later grind game when you just access code their ass. Now for the side deck, so I already said I main deck 18 hand traps, you can't main deck more than that, like, the second you get to this number, 
you actually severely risk now just drawing five hand traps and up with eight hand traps eight back to back to back so once you hit around 18 you can't really put in more i built a deck for going second and almost like it's pre-sided going second and because you have so many starters you're good going first as well so i only sided in two hand traps against each of the meta decks uh going second so against tiralamit i'm putting in ghost spell against sprite i'm putting in ghost ogre this makes it so you have 20 hand traps post side and you're almost already built like you already pre-sided going second with 18 in the main deck so the card you side out for this is depending obviously on the deck that you face but uh it's you have a few options you can't side out too much because like most of it is just the most minimal engine humanly possible so what i do is i just look at the matchup do i think is split carrot really that necessary against some of them is the third swap frog really that necessary against some of them even because you're playing 10 ways to enchantress the third right of your uh you prefer to or a foolish burial versus that because the foolish burial doesn't really add the uh enchantress to your hand and it just works better with swap frog so i'll just decide which two i want to cut out of these depending on the matchup and you'll have 20 hand traps and the full engine still in and without sacrificing your uh your 20 hand traps without sacrificing your consistency and now going first, three trap trick, two D barrier, and two card that I do not own, but I will search and find it. Mischief of the gnomes. The idea of this is simple. You already made you have 20 hand traps going second, GG. 18 going first, GG. Now when you're going first, which is not gonna happen rarely because you're gonna two all all your opponents, but when it does happen, you're prepared. Because you have five ways to absolutely obliterate tier element, because you're uh, eight ways, because prosperity will always search one of these five. So I'm considering prosperity another eight way to these you have eight d barriers going first and you also have eight against flight which is a deck i think you'll face a lot but you'll still face terror elements a lot as well you have eight ways to obliterate them mischief mischief of the gnomes which is the proxy literally what it says is reduce the level of every single monster in your opponent's hand by one and you can do that again the following turn so for two turns in a row all their splites are level one that's gg there's nothing they could do like after it's a the field they're level one as well it's actually game over on the spot with one single trap one single trap is a handshake you could pass and you win and you have eight ways to this and you still play like it's just too good going first you have 10 auto win cards against those decks and another cool thing about this is now it synergizes you're gonna think all right but where's all the back row hate so now because you're playing trap trick for the strategy of those you could put in eradicators if you want to but i opted to play evenly matched so now when you're facing a trap decks we're talking about elich we're talking about the decks that set five mystic mind decks whatever you have nine ways to evenly matched. How, how are you How are you losing? There is no other card. To, what if they go anti-spell? What if they go this? What if they go What if they go? Uh, heavenly prison? There's no way to stop evenly matched against tra trap decks unless they play, so unless they open sol Solemn Judgment. They have three Solemn Judgments. You have nine evenly matches. You obliterate them. Then you're going to think to yourself, okay, but Triff, what if they just save their Gozen match? I don't care. This deck does not lose to Gozen or Rivalry. Half the cards are fire. Half the cards are dark. Half the cards are Enchantress. You just pick one engine. Decide one engine you want to focus on and do it. You Draco back them. And then the last card you save is you have Draco back out the one singular Floodgate. And I side deck one Splite Smashers for Floodgate decks or Mystic Mind decks. So now you have one Smashers and one Draco back to single-handedly out random Floodgates. And you have these to obliterate everything. So the, the matchup against Trap decks is just absurdly free. And because you're playing 20 hand traps against combo decks, those are absurdly free. And because you have the D barrier, trap trick combo with prosperity and the administration of the gnomes, every other meta deck is free. So that's the deck. The freest deck in the history of mankind. And this is the best way to play Splite. Brave Splite. And I look forward to taking this deck to regionals on Sunday, where I'm going to 10-0 all my opponents and win. And take home the trophy for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's video where I'm going to showcase you guys the best tier element deck of this format. And on top of that, make sure to get the Splite playmats while you guys can because they're only going to be up for a week. I decided for this upcoming week, I'm going to travel everywhere. 20 Splite videos back to back to back to back and claps back to back to back. So make sure to get your Splite playmats while you guys can. Thank you guys for watching the video. Shout out to the cameraman Shad. And I'll uh -huh. see you guys in the next video. Peace!